Hello everyone, Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope everyone is doing well. Coming to the end of the year and we have a very dangerous security vulnerability that has uh, cropped up in the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Log4J or Log4Shell vulnerability as it has uh, been referred to. Uh, very dangerous, uh, scored 10 out of 10 on the CVSS uh, uh, scoring scaling system. Uh, for security vulnerabilities. So definitely one to pay attention to, to remediate, to patch, so on and so forth. So in this video, we're going to briefly demonstrate the steps to remediate your uh, VMware vCenter server uh, appliance, the VCSA appliance. And what this remediation consists of is uh, basically a Python shell script that is downloaded locally, uploaded to your VCSA appliance, and then uh, executed on your VCSA appliance. So the first step I'm gonna do is uh, download the VC underscore log 4J underscore mitigator script, and it's a .py script uh, for Python shell script. So we're gonna click on this, should download instantly, it's very small. Uh, so download the script, and we're going to upload to our vCenter server appliance. Okay, so we have downloaded the uh, mitigation script, and as you can see, I have it inside of a folder on the D drive of this uh, workstation that I'm working with. So we have vc underscore log for j underscore mitigator dot py script. So uh, utility I'm using is WinSCP. Uh, no doubt you guys are familiar with WinSCP if you use uh, Windows platform. I extend this out just a little bit. Uh, so what we're going to do is just uh, simply drag and drop the file onto or into the root folder of the vCenter server appliance. So I'm going to take it, drag it, and drop it. And literally it's a 44 uh, kilobyte file, so it takes no time. Uh, so we just see it instantly uh, appear on the VCSA appliance. So that's step two, getting the file from your workstation where you downloaded to your VCSA appliance. So the third step, after we have placed the mitigation script onto the VCSA appliance, is to simply run the uh, Python script. So uh, what I have here is basically a shell session. So I've just used... Uh, putty to uh, connect to my VCSA appliance and of course as we saw in the previous step I have the mitigation script located in the root folder of my VCSA appliance. So I have the script in place so now what we need to do is execute the script and one thing I may mention I always like before performing maintenance updates those type of operations on your VCSA appliance always a good idea to create a snapshot at the host level. So not creating a snapshot of vSphere vCenter through the vCenter, but rather doing that at your host level. So that's what I've done. Created a snapshot of just pre-log4j shell script re remediation or whatever you want to call that, uh, just so we have a rollback in case something happens or you know script doesn't run correctly or you have some... Uh, ill effects from any of those types of operations. So what I'm going to do is just simply run an ls command. Uh, one thing we want to do is make sure that we have this script set with execute permissions. So just doing a, a chmod plus x to make sure that it's executable. And then we simply want to uh, run the script. So what I'm doing is just calling the script in the command line. We're going to hit enter and basically what you will see with the process or workflow, uh, the script is going to do a good job of just trying to let you know what is about to happen. So it does inform you that there will be service restarts. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that you may lose connections to your vCenter server. Um, you, if you have other applications such as monitoring, such as backups, other types of integrations with your uh, vCenter server, then you need to make note that this is a disruptive operation since services are going to be stopped and started. So there may be a period of time, minutes, uh, if we will, uh, to uh, run the script, stop and start services, 
and then vCenter will be once again responsive uh, to those integrated applications. So what I need to do is uh, type Y for yes. Get my focus over here. Type Y. And here we go. We're going to start start stopping. <laughs> We're going to stop uh, VCSA appliance services. So what this is going to do again is going to stop services, it's going to apply the remediation, and then it will then start up services after the remediation is completed. So what I'm going to do is pause the video while it uh, does the bulk of the operations because this is essentially going to be a non-event for us to do anything. We're just going to be waiting on services to stop, remediation to be applied, and then services started. So I'll come back to you uh, when those things are completed. Okay, so we now have the script. It only took uh, about maybe five, six minutes for the script to run and find all the vulnerabilities uh, associated with Log4j and remediate those uh, vulnerabilities. So what we have here is the completed script. And at the bottom, you should see the, uh, the output that it is starting uh, services and the info main at the very bottom says that it's done. So, and if you scroll back up, you will see a list, a whole slew of files uh, that it uh, found as vulnerable, and then it replaces or remediates those uh, particular files uh, with those versions that are not uh, vulnerable to the vulnerability. So we can scroll back up, but we're just going to see a, uh, the script output. Once again, it backs up the files, it then remediates and uh, replaces those uh, and remediates those files uh, from those that are vulnerable to log4j to those that are not. So pretty quick and easy, uh, honestly, and uh, this is a, a nice workaround provided from VMware. And what I've noticed they are doing is it's the very beginning of the initial information that was output about log4j. Everything was manual uh, in the KB articles, but what I've noticed is VMware has since went back through and provided either a batch script, if it, we're talking about Horizon connection servers or agents, or in the case of uh, VMware uh, vCenter server, uh, in terms of the VCSA appliance, they have provided Python scripts uh, that allow automating this process. Because I tell you, when you're going in and low-level editing jar files or trying to replace those or doing those types of things, the uh, likelihood that something is not going to be carried out correctly is extremely high. So the last thing you want to do in trying to remediate this vulnerability is hose your uh, VCSA appliance. So definitely use, uh, utilize the snapshots, utilize the Python scripts provided. Uh, that is the best approach. Uh, and then hopefully in a few days, weeks, however long this is going to take for VMware to wrap their minds and uh, production around this is to uh, we should have proper dot level releases that actually properly remediate uh, this vulnerability and take it out altogether. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully, this helps to pro uh, at least give an overview of the process. And I've written this up as a blog post uh, prior to the video. Just wanted to follow it up with a video demonstrating the steps, just to make it quick and easy. Uh, pictures worth a thousand words, videos worth even more than that. Hopefully, uh, just helps to shortcut the process of understanding what you need to do to remediate uh, this vulnerability. So once again, Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in a future video soon. Thanks again.